And I want to thank everyone for joining us today for uh, Flashback Friday. Um, the Whiting Public Library isn't ready just yet to offer in-person programs, but both the adult and children's department have uh, virtual programs planned for the next couple months. Um, today's program is Flashback Friday. Um, it's a virtual pro program where we go around town and provide history behind some of Whiting's unique buildings. The first building we'll be highlighting today is uh, located here at 1423 119th Street. Uh, this building, uh, which is located on the corner of 119th Street and Oliver Street, was built in 1902 by George S. Hillier. This building's original address was 529 119th Street. Dr. George S. Hillier was Whiting's premier dentist. He was born on June 4, 1870, on a farm in New York. In 1890, Hilliard went into the laundry business. For the next three years, he operated a laundry, one in New York and then one in South Dakota. In 1893, Hilliard decided he, was, he had washed enough clothes and decided to enroll in Northwestern's Dental College. Hilliard graduated from the Dental College in 1896. At this time, he moved to East Chicago, Indiana. In 1897, Dr. Hilliard relocated to Whiting. Hilliard later commissioned the construction of this two-story brick building, located here at the corner of 119th Street and Oliver. The doctor's dental rooms and residence was located on the second floor, where he remained until 1950. The first national bank occupied the first floor. Gellis J. Bader and Fred J. Smith were two great financial leaders known throughout East Chicago, Indiana Harbor, and Whiting. Fred Smith would go on to become Whiting's second mayor, serving from 1906 to 1910. Bader and Smith founded the first national bank in 1902. The bank was located on the first floor of Dr. J. G. S. Hilliard's brick building. The bank opened for business on January 1, 1903. The bank at this time was furnished with the most modern fixtures that were available at that time. Four years later, the building underwent a construction. At this time, a new addition was added to the back of the building. The renovation added an additional 4,875 square feet to the structure. The new addition included more second story apartments and storage facilities. You can see the different colored brick from where the original and the new addition uh, came later. Here is a photograph of what the building looked like when uh, the first national bank opened in 1903. As you can see in the photograph, there is no addition in the back. On March 29, 1915, the First National Bank of Whiting opened its doors to its beautiful new home located on the corner of 119th Street and New York Avenue. Until recently, that building was known as the Chase Bank. Smith and Bader organized a second bank at this time called the First Trust and Savings Bank in June 1915. The bank opened its doors in the former headquarters of the First National Bank, which is uh, located here on the corner of Oliver and 119th Street. However, on December 12th, 1931, the First National Bank of Whiting and the First Trust and Savings Banks of Whiting were taken over by a newly organized bank called the State Bank of Whiting. At this time, the doors at the location here at 1423 119th Street was closed. During the first part of the 1930s, George Hilliard continued to practice uh, dentistry on the second floor of this building. However, I couldn't find out if any other businesses uh, occupied the first floor at that time. At some point in the early part of the 1930s, the city 
of Lighting reconfigured its address numbering system, and the building now had a new address, which is the one we know today, 1423 119th Street. In 1937, the first floor was opened, uh, operated by Honeydell, and then later Morris Confectionery. A confectionery is a place where you can buy candy, sodas, and a variety of other sweet treats. A year later, the building was called the Chocolate Shop, um, which, was, which was in business until 1939. Here's another photograph of what uh, the building looked like in the early part of the 1930s. In 1939, uh, the, the building had a new ownership. It was now called the Orphan Peter Confectionery. Again, it was just a place where you could buy chocolates and candies um, and anything to uh, satisfy your sweet tooth. In 1941, the Minor Dunn franchise opened up a restaurant here. The restaurant con continued to serve hamburgers and their signature sherbet until 1945. And I have some photographs of what the Minor Dunn looked like at the time. These are both exterior shots of the building. Then I have one of the interior as well. a new business occupied the lower level of this, of this building. The Richard Adam, Adams Furniture Store moved in, and they remained at this lake location until the 1950s. In 1952, two of Whiting's most prominent lawyers um, began to practice law on the second floor of this building. They were John Federoff and Dewey Kelly. During the 1960s and 1970s, the first floor of this building was converted into a laundry business. In the 60s, it was known as the Calumet Launderer and Dry Cleaners, and in the 70s, it was called the Whiting Laundromat and Dry Cleaners. I struggled to find what, if any, businesses operated at this location throughout the 80s. However, in the early part of the 1990s, Conley Sandwich Shop opened here. It operated in until 1997 when the school city of Whiting closed its campus for lunch. Fun fact, in the 90s when I was in high school, Conley's Deli provided the football team its pregame meal every Friday night. In 1998, a store called Paint in the Glass opened up at 1423 119th Street. I believe this was a specialty gift shop that sold a variety of products, but specifically stained glass crafts. Paint in the Glass remained in business here until 2006 when it, opera it was operated by House of Invitations. The Invitation store only lasted approximately two years. In 2009, the building was converted into the ultimate Taekwondo studio, which produced some talented martial artists well into 2014. At this time, the storefront became the home to ABC Wireless. The cell phone store only operated uh, for about a couple years. However, in 2018, 2018, the building underwent a massive renovation. At this time, the Comfort Rose Coffee Shop opened its doors. Unfortunately, Comfort Rose recently announced that it would be closed permanently. Who knows what will open here next? What I do know is that it will only add to the building's storied history. Here's a photograph of what the building looked like before uh, the 2018 re renovation. And then I have some advertisements. Um, of the various businesses that were there. These were all appeared in uh, 
the school's yearbook. So that's our program today. This was Flashback Friday. Um, periodically we're going to go through uh, the city of Whiting and find interesting buildings to talk about and provide a little background and history to um, what we, we have going on. Um, the library's next virtual program is today. Um, uh, it's going to be with the children's department at 6 o'clock and it's going to be a, a watch a, a Zoom program. Um, and you can find information about that on the library's Facebook pa page. On Monday, um, we will be Monday, August the 10th at 12 p.m. I will be hosting a Facebook Live uh, cooking program on the library's Facebook page. Um, so check back on uh, Monday and see what's on the menu. Uh, thank you for uh, watching today, and I hope you enjoyed uh, and got a little insight into the history of lighting. Thank you.